history tells us pretty clearly that populist protectionist policies eventually are extraordinarily damaging, but that it can take quite a lot of time for that damage to become manifest. If you look at Latin America, which has probably in recent decades been exhibit A of having those kind of policies, you often get a sugar high, you often get an economic boom that lasts for a while before it all ends in tears. A warning shot from The Economist's editor-in-chief, Zanny Minton Beddoes, offering her global economic outlook at the best attended Super Return International in its 20-year history. More than 2,000 industry members arrived in Berlin for the chance to share insights and strategies for navigating 2017's tricky landscape. But we have fun. The real return is just amazing. I think the fun will continue for quite some time. Um, but it will end, and uh, it will end badly, and I think it will be hangover for all of us. Indeed, whilst the investment environment is buoyant, industry leaders warned that the very best practices must be employed with such an unpredictable geopolitical future. You need to invest with a trend and, of course, identify those drivers, be able to identify them and then deliver upon them. And if you diversify your risk, if you make sure you have capital, you don't overlever, I think you will land on your feet, but at some point in time it will be painful. One such investment trend at the forefront of conversations at the conference is technology, and who better to expand on that than the man who co-founded Facebook. We were college students at the time, and we were building a product initially to, to make our experiences in college better. And uh, it, ha it happened to be that because we were college students building an initial product for college students, we had perfect product market fit. Eduardo Savarin explaining the simplicity which underlined the initial success of his famous venture, sitting alongside his partner at B Capital, Raj Ganguly. Together, the pair now want to support tech innovation in areas such as artificial intelligence and machine learning, which they anticipate have countless applications across all sectors. And typically, the modus operandi has been young kids in a garage or a dorm room are going to out-disrupt the largest business in the world. And what we're moving towards, especially as innovation is starting to touch very large traditional industries, that in fact young kids in a garage can, can put together phenomenal technology that will enable innovation in some of the largest businesses in the world and their distribution platform, their capital, their regulatory know-how will enable young entrepreneurs' growth and their businesses' growth to accelerate. The idea is, is, is a marriage, but it requires a translation engine. Uh, very different cultures, but with a lot of potential synergy. And we leverage our partnership with a large organization that has tremendous access to the corporate world to, to help bring, bring forward that marriage. So cooperation in a brave new world, and one that will also need infrastructure innovation to support it. So the way we see innovation is uh, the world is changing. Uh, uh, in information technology, robotics, electric cars, um, renewable power, all these things are happening in parallel. They each have a different impact and a lot of those impacts you cannot predict, but some of them you can. And the people who may be building those new types of companies and markets aren't necessarily thinking about the impacts that they're going to have. In essence, what we do is we try to bridge the gap between the world as it is and these innovators who are creating new worlds. And as investors search for innovation, private equity itself must continue to adapt and evolve to stay where it likes to be, ahead of the game. I think it's interesting to step back and say, what is different about this particular part of the private equity evolution that wasn't the case 10 years ago? And I think the capabilities of our industry, the global scope of our, of our industry, what we're doing with companies uh, is so different than 10 or 15 years ago that it really portends well for us to be frankly leading the next cycle coming out of it as opposed to feeling exposed by it. And I think it's a pretty good model to continue to drive secular growth, not just worry about the cycle. An optimistic note to end on. Thanks, John, so much yes, for joining you. us. Thank you. Thank you.